This video is sponsored by Snot Goblin Gaming. Before you start your next DIY terrain project or hit confirm on your next purchase, let's talk about this new modular terrain that will change how you game. Traditional terrain can be time consuming, expensive, and take up a lot of space. Today, I'm painting this modular set of ruins from Snot Goblin Gaming's upcoming Kickstarter, Future Proof Modular Wargame Terrain, and going over a simple system of how to achieve great terrain in bases every time. After push fitting these pieces together, I'm starting by priming my terrain black using Style Res Primer. When you can, save yourself time by using primer that is the same color you want as your base layer. I usually start with black for stonework like this, and I use brown for projects where dirt would be more prominent. Then a second coat just for opacity. When it comes to creating interesting and believable terrain and bases, I go by the rule of three. Three textures of your ground, three textures of your foliage, and three colors for each. This rule of three assures that you will have the variety needed for your base and terrain to look realistic. Here, alongside the stone floor texture, I'm applying super glue randomly to the floor pieces to attach sand and small stones. I'm sprinkling this sand lightly across my super glue. We don't want to use the entire glue puddle, then we'll just have random circles of stones. Then once it's dry, I'm priming it black. Now onto dry brushing. I've got a large domed brush and I'm starting with a dark gray. To get the best dry brushing experience, you actually want to use a damp brush. Adding moisture to the brush helps create a soft and natural application of our paint. I created my own DIY dampening pad that you can learn about in this video here. I'm dabbing my brush into my sponge, using a rolling motion in the paint to apply the paint evenly across the brush, and then removing any excess paint using my texture palette. Again, you can learn about the texture palette in this video here. The tradition of using paper towels actually removes the moisture from our brush, which is why dry brushing has a tendency, historically, to look dusty and uneven. Here I'm using a circular motion with a heavy hand to apply my dark gray. Pressing the brush deeper into the plastic pieces will apply more paint. As my colors get lighter, my hand will also get lighter. Once that's done, we'll switch to a lighter gray. I'm using the same steps as before, just using a lighter hand so I'm only hitting more of those raised details. As an optional step to create more contrast, I'm creating a glaze using water and a very light gray. I'm stippling the edges of the cracks and cobblestones to give our terrain an extra layer of depth. This is not required, but the sculpts have a lot of great detail and I want to highlight them as much as I can. I'm also a perfectionist. Time to bring in our three colors. I thinned down three Citadel washes in blue, purple, and green. Mixing these washes with water will help decrease the saturation. The goal is for this to look like natural variation, not a rainbow. I'm scumbling these colors across the pieces and all on top of each other, adding depth and dimension to our pieces. We do still want some gray to show through because the key is variation. For some extra detailing, I'm painting the shutters brown and the handles and hinges silver. I'm then going over that with my desaturated blue wash, which I don't recommend. I definitely should have used a brown wash instead. As an option to give the walls a more aged look, I'm using Noosh to create a brown wash and painting lines down the wall before quickly wiping it away with a makeup sponge. 
Noosh is a weathering agent from Monument Hobbies designed specifically for this sort of application. Noosh is great because you can use paint you already have on hand and therefore have the creativity to use any color you want. Here I'm using a reddish brown to contrast the cool tones I've used thus far. Again, this contrast adds more realism to the terrain. The terrain pieces are looking fine, but it could be better. Let's bring in our three foliage textures and three foliage colors. Since these pieces are modular and are meant to be broken down for storage, I'm limiting myself to foliage that is sturdy and can take a beating. I can actually only come up with two textures that fit that description, so it's just two for this project. I'm using Mod Podge in the cracks and sprinkling some loose grass on top. I like this technique because if the grass ever comes loose with my assembly and storage, it will hardly be noticeable. I'm using a sort of wilted color of grass because I bet that there isn't that much sunlight here. Second, I'm adding in moss. Moss is created by ripping up packing sponge into pieces, then applying super glue randomly onto the walls and pressing the sponge into it lightly. Don't push too hard, we only want that first layer of sponge material to dry to the terrain. Allow it to dry and then gently pull it up. It should leave a fuzzy texture behind. Unlike the grass where if it comes off you won't notice, this super glue moss is definitely not going anywhere. No matter what foliage you apply, consider the versatility of these pieces. These can be used as one-man hideouts or stacked up to several floors. Make sure your foliage can work no matter your design. I'm painting the moss with a base coat of dark, desaturated red. This is one of the colors seen in our grass mixture. Then I'm skimming the top layer of the moss, sort of like edge highlighting, with an army green. Again, this is one of the colors from our grass. However, this looked too much like the grass, so I went back over top with a vibrant green using a very light hand. Using the same base colors as the grass makes it look more natural in the setting, but the vibrant green sets the two textures and colors apart. And there you have it. Our castle ruin terrain is ready for my table. Let me know your thoughts. Will you be using any of these techniques in your next base or terrain piece? Be sure to check out Snot Goblin Gaming's Kickstarter coming in February. If you like what I do, you know the drill, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks so much for being here. I'll see you next time.